Harry's Wife, Part 101.13.2, Wales versus Sussex. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I'm continuing the video analysis of the footage of the Windsor walkabout. Sky News provided approximately 42 minutes worth. I don't need to go through everything because some of it's in effect repetitive. And what I propose to do in this part is demonstrate, in essence, the differences that are occurring in relation to Harry's wife, Prince Harry, and the Waleses, and also demonstrate aspects of the narcissistic dynamic for you. Before I get into all of that, it's interesting to note that with regard to the walkabout, meor.com, and an article by Divya Kishori, stated, Kate Middleton, and I'm only reading what they're using in terms of her name before some of you get your panties in a twist, Kate Middleton called confident and elegant in walkabout, as opposed to clingy and needy, Harry's wife. It seems the tragedy that struck the British royal family on September the 8th with the death of Queen Elizabeth II has diminished the gap between brothers, Prince William and Prince Harry. The two princes, along with their respective wives, Kate Middleton and Harry's wife, were seen together outside Windsor Castle on Saturday, September the 10th. The reunited Fab Four were seen meeting people who had come to pay tribute to their late grandmother. They were also seen admiring the flowers and cards left outside the castle for the Queen. While the sighting of the four royals together has warmed many hearts, there were those who couldn't help but compare the Princess of Wales to the Duchess of Sussex. Fans of Catherine praised her confident look while taking a dig at Harry's wife. A user tweeted, Kate looks so elegant, confident and charismatic, as does her husband. I realised that people's charisma will be lost when they're too submissive to romantic relationships. Another wrote, William and Kate have a healthy relationship and Kate is confident in her own skin. That goofy, needy Meg needs to hang on for dear life to Harry. She's out of her element, and she knows it. Harry made a big mistake. A third noted, It's just how clingy, controlling, and desperate me gain is. She has to be attached to him every second, so she can control his every move, also known as an abusive relationship. Whereas Kate is a strong, confident woman who does not need or want to control her husband, also known as a health relationship, healthy relationship. A person pointed out, funny, I thought Harry's wife looked so insecure. She was crutching onto her husband for reassurance. She seems out of place, like a little girl almost saying, please don't let go of me, I don't know these people. The Princess of Wales walks with confidence and presence of a grown woman. Another concurred, exactly my thoughts, holding on to Harry like a two-year-old. Kate is confident in her role. Harry's wife is a laughing stick. I think they meant to write stock. She is so not royalty. Some critics of the former actress also cast doubts if she's actually a feminist. When a user said, Harry opened the car door for Harry's wife and returned back to the other side to enter the car, my kind of gentleman, someone replied. Thought Harry's wife was a feminist. God, you people talk some BS. A third mentioned, Harry's wife claims to be a feminist. Isn't it supposed to be objectifying for a man to open a door as if she can't do it herself? She does victim really well. Oh, that's right. She's an actress. Kate is a true feminist and can open the door herself. Harry's wife is a failed feminist and must rely on a man to open the door. Another tweet read. A tweet thrashing Harry's wife read, A mature, confident woman doesn't need to hang off her husband 24-7 like an unwanted appendage particularly in professional environments. Feminists certainly don't behave like that. Harry's wife's inability to walk unaided is truly bizarre. Go home, Meghan Markle. Hashtag Duchess of Overseas. Harry's wife and Harry's obsessive need to hang off each other like teens at a prom is absolutely toe-curling, immature, and so unprofessional in a middle-aged couple. It's like she's physically incapable of walking unaided and just kind of waddles. Such an empowered, confident feminist. Not another tweet added. Well, the boot very much being put in there on Harry's wife with regard to her performance during the walkabout. But let's look at some footage now, and you can make your own minds up as to what she's doing, and I'll explain to you precisely why she's behaving as she does. 
I'm going to take certain excerpts throughout the next 40 minutes or so, rather than go through it all, to highlight various interactions and explain them for you with regard to the narcissistic dynamic. After the arrival, the Prince and Princess of Wales and Harry and his wife continue to look at various bouquets. And then we pick up the footage where we have seen that Harry's wife glances at Prince William. Again, notice this is an attempt to hoover him, him to try and gain control over him, to draw fuel, and it fails. He pointedly stares straight ahead at her, ignoring what she, ignoring the glance that she gives. Again, Notice there's no defiance, there's only hesitancy and uncertainty for the reasons that I've explained in the arrival video, that quite simply the fact that she is being ignored largely by Prince William and completely by the Princess of Wales is repeatedly wounding her, and she attempts to assert control over them by looking at them, and that keeps failing, so she's being wounded, she can't go to the indirect assertion of control, and she has to stay in a position of, of, in her own mind, thinking, this is really mean, this is unfair, the hateful duo. But then she's wounded again moments later, when they again fail to acknowledge and interact with her. The press, of course, are taking pictures, so she gains some tertiary fuel from those individuals, is attention directed towards her, and also, of course, by the presence and reactions of Prince Harry. So she's not completely starved of fuel, but she's not getting any from the Waleses, and she's being wounded by their behaviour. So this is problematic for her. You can see, then, later in the footage, that the Prince and Princess of Wales just simply walk away. There's no, let's go over here, or come with us. They walk, and Harry and his wife have to follow. Complete contrast with early, earlier interactions years ago between them and shows exactly the contempt that the Prince and Princess of Wales have for Harry's wife and the way that they've been advised to deal with her. They pointedly walk away. No encouragement, no interaction. This again will wound Harry's wife. Harry, suitably chastised and realising that he's got to behave himself, just follows. As she does follow, of course... Harry's wife engages the grip of doom once again, asserting control physically over Prince Harry to ensure that he remains under control and also to draw fuel by the fact that his hand is holding hers. That response by him provides her with fuel and signals he's under control and assists with regard to the fact, of course, that she's being made to feel anxious through the repeated wounding, although she doesn't realise what this is, coming from the Prince and Princess of Wales. years and I rather sense that for the late Queen knowing that her two grandsons are here with their two wives together supporting the King and reflecting upon her and all the kindnesses that have been shown in reflection of the late Queen's life uh, would be very special to her she only really ever cared that all the family uh, should be happy and she 
as was said by the king, she always saw the very best in everybody. And she will have done that in particular with all members of her family. All right, Alistair, thank you very much. Uh, Rhiannon Mills, our royal correspondent, is also watching these pictures with us. And Rhiannon, it's uh, interesting that... We pick up the footage a minute or so later, and all that has happened in the meantime is that the four have continued to look at the bouquets, and Harry's wife has continued to be wounded by being ignored by the Prince and Princess of Wales. You can see that Harry's wife is engaging with Prince Harry in the footage that you've just watched, and is getting nothing from the Prince and Princess of Wales. So she's gaining fuel from Harry, continuing to be wounded by the Prince and Princess of Wales. Notice again the physical assertion of control over Prince Harry by touching him on the back. This uh, ensures that he remains under control. Externally, it looks like affection. And that is what somebody who does not understand or recognise Nelson would think that it is. But what it really is, is affection and physical touch being utilised to assert control over Harry and draw fuel from him. She then links arms with him. Contrast, of course, the body language between Harry's wife and Harry in the footage that you've witnessed so far. Or repeatedly, she's got hold of him with the grip of doom. She's got a hand on the middle of his back. She's then linking arms with him, whereas the Prince and Princess of Wales don't have to do that because they don't have to control one another. They don't have to maintain a facade to show to everybody, hey, look at us, we're so in love. They're there to mourn the loss of their grandmother and grandmother-in-law. They are there to pay their respects. They are there to meet the crowd. It's not about them. Whereas, of course, with Harry's wife, it always has to be about her. Look how such a couple we are. Look how together we are. Uh, look how I adore him. Please, please, please notice me. All of this, of course, being done, driven by her narcissism. And then, of course, once again, we see the Prince and Princess of Wales, having looked at the bouquets around the gate, decide to head off to go and meet some of the people that have attended. Again, there is no let's go down here, but rather Prince William sets off the Princess of Wales alongside him, and the Sussexes have to follow. Relegated very much to the second row once again, being put in their place. And whilst there are people who say this is a show of unity, those of you in the know can see that this is quite simply Harry and his wife having to follow the Prince and Princess of Wales and note their place. And Harry's wife is hating every moment of this. But she can't do anything. She can't explode. The facade won't let that happen. And instead it manifests this sensation of unease, impending doom, which is why she looks so uneasy like that rabbit caught in the headlights.
the larger segment that you've just watched is to provide you with a contrast between the two groups. You will notice that the Prince and Princess of Wales, they headed down one side, and the Sussexes down the other. Now, of course, this is on the face of it is sensible. Let's split up so that we are able to see more of the people that are there. But there's no, for instance, mixing of the two couples. Come on, let's the chaps take this side and the girls take the other. Oh, no. It's very clear that the Princess and Princess of Wales want to do their own thing, and they don't want the Sussexes alongside them. You can see in the interactions that take place between the Prince and Princess of Wales the emotional empathy that is exhibited by both of them. You can see, for instance, when Catherine has her name called, she turns and smiles. There's no death stare suddenly emanating. There's no pouring of Prince William. Prince William isn't manoeuvring her around. They engage and talk, showing an interest in the people that they are speaking to, conducting themselves with the emotional empathy that they both have. Catherine as an empath and Prince William as a normal. We then, of course, cross to the other side, and you can see Harry and his wife. Harry exiting, exhibiting his emotional empathy, shaking their hands, engaging with people, talking with them, no doubt relishing the prospect of being able to have a bit of normality amongst his own people. Harry's wife mo moves alongside him. In this section, the crowd is receptive to her, shaking hands with her, being polite, and therefore she's receiving fuel, positive fuel, pure positive fuel, from tertiary sources. They are not threatening her sense of control, and they're giving her fuel. And thus, her unease starts to be removed. The repeated wounding that she was experiencing as a consequence of being alongside the Waleses who were ignoring her has stopped because they, in effect, don't exist. Even though they're behind her, for the purposes of her narcissism, they're not on her radar at this point in time because she has her back to them and she's facing the crowd. Those that are on her radar are her husband, intimate partner, primary source, and all of the people gathered in the crowd who, of course, are tertiary sources to her. They, by their polite responses and shaking of hands, etc., and kind words, all demonstrate that they're under control and provide her with some fuel. So the descent in her fuel level caused by the wounding by the whales is halted, and now it's starting to fill back up, so she looks less uneasy as she once did. You'll notice at one point, however, that there is some cheering that takes place, evidently directed at the Prince and Princess of Wales. Harry doesn't react. He's too engrossed in talking to people. He's focused on them. But notice Harry's wife. There's a furtive glance across to see what's going on. This, of course, is the narcissist's need to always know what's happening. And, of course, the fact that she sees the cheers aren't for her, but they're for somebody else, leaves her looking somewhat nonplussed. That creates a moment of anxiety. She plays with her hair, and then she's back to engaging with the crowd once again. Of course, as this pans on, you can see the various interactions that are occurring, and of course there is the moment when the aide comes forward to ask for the flowers, and we see the facade slip. But I've dealt with that in parts passim. So if you want to understand more about that particular instance, I'd encourage you to go to Harry's Wife Part 101.7, The Facade Slips Again, to have a more detailed analysis of that aspect. As for the balance of the footage, we of course have the incident where Harry's wife is snubbed by certain members of the crowd. I'm going to have a separate video about that. You also would have seen again another incident involving the flowers, which I've covered already in parts passing in part 101.7, the facade slips again. The rest of the footage is quite simply uh, repetitive in terms of the Prince and Princess of Wales doing what they do very well, engaging with people, interacting with them, exhibiting their emotional empathy. And on the other side uh, is Harry and his wife, her exhibiting cognitive empathy as she deals with the crowd. Harry working his way alongside there also, and being treated darn well by the British public after their behaviour generally. Accordingly, the walkabout gives you a useful opportunity to understand the differences of behaviour, but primarily 
the gulf that remains between the Prince and Princess of Wales and how they've effectively dealt with Harry's wife and the wounding that they've caused. There's two further sections that I'm going to strip out separately to deal with this, which in terms are, of course, are the snubbing that takes place for Harry's wife, that's coming up presently, and also their departure from the walkabout as well, which is worth mention separately. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.